Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to the desktop for another rules breakdown. And this week I'd like to cover Tunnels and Trolls. Now this is the 5th edition from 1979, but given that version 5.5 didn't come out until 2005, this was the valid edition for some 26 years, so probably the most common version. Now Tunnels and Trolls is a very abstract system. It tends to go away from detail in combat and actions to make them more descriptive. So this is probably going to be one of the faster rules breakdowns, but let's see how it goes. So skills. Well, Tunnels and Trolls has no skills. However, if you want to test whether somebody manages to lift something, where they manage to make a leap, some acrobatic move, you're going to be rolling against their stats. And that's in Tunnels and Trolls is called a saving throw. So we'll use Fang the Delectable here, we'll keep our finger in this page, and we'll turn on to section 1.8 on saving throws. Now the Games Master decides the difficulty of it, and using the formula listed here, you take a number, so level 1 is 20, and then you subtract the stat. Now normally this is a luck saving throw, but you can use it for anything. Um, if it's level 2, it's 25, up to level 6, which is 45. And then you subtract their stat, and you're rolling 2d6 and trying to get over it. Now, it's worth noting that if you get a double, like I just placed the dice there, then you keep that, and then you roll an add. So, if we'd roll two fives, we would then roll, and we've got another five, so we've got a total of 15. So, let's say it's a level three, and he's trying to make a leap, so it's dexterity. So, he's got... 30 minus his dexterity. His dexterity is only 6, so that's 24. He only got a 15, so he fails. Now, luck is used for a lot of things. So, if a beam is crashing down towards the character's head, they roll their luck. And luck is the sort of default stat, but you can use the other stats where they come in. So, shrugging off a poison might be a constitution roll. Thinking of a solution to a puzzle, be an IQ roll, etc. Initiative. Well, there is no initiative system, because combat rounds in Tunnels and Trolls are about one to two minutes in length, and they are very abstractified combat. So people are hitting each other, they're dodging, they're ducking, and the combat rolls that you make in a combat round are to decide what the effects of everything that happened in that combat round were. So, by being descriptive, your Games Master might give you any bonuses, but basically you're making your roles in the combat round to see what the final effects, who managed to hurt who, out of several different attacks, feints, jumps, rolls, etc. Now in combat, most of the roles are based on your weapon. But you do have personal ads. So if we deal with those first, if we turn to section 1.33, we can see that you get bonus ads. Now, exceptional stats in strength, luck, and dex lead to it. So, exceptional strength of over 12 gives you plus one for every point that you're over 12, as does luck and dexterity. However, if you are under 9, then you get minus 1 to your personal ads. So, going back to Fang, we can see he has a strength of 13, so that's 1 over, so he gets a plus 1. His luck is 10, well that's not above 12 and it's not less than 9, so there's no modifier for that. And he's got a dexterity of 6, so he gets a minus 3 for that. So his ads work out as minus 2. Now, beyond that, it depends on what weapon he's using. Now, weapons you can only use depending on your strength and dexterity. If we go over to weapons, we can see swords here and the strength and dexterity requirements. So let's just go for a straight short sword. Now, seven and three he can easily make, and it does three dice damage. So, Fang doing three dice damage, is going to be rolling three dice, minus his personal adds of two. 
and we roll, and he only gets four there. And that's as simple as it is. Now, he can get adds off the weapon as well. So if he was dexterous enough and strong enough to use a broadsword, then he'd be rolling three dice and adding four. And that would change things slightly. Now, the way it works is your opponent also rolls their dice based on their weapon or monster type. Because monsters have a monster rating, which works as their strength and dice. So... They roll theirs. Let's say they're, they're somebody using a broadsword, so they've got three dice plus four. They manage to get 13, so they win. Now it's the difference that matters. So he got a four, they got a 13. So the difference is nine. So the difference between the two attacks was nine. So that's how much damage is done to the opponent. Now, for monsters, that comes straight off their monster rating and will lower their effectiveness in future rounds. They'll roll less dice, they'll get less adds. But for characters, it comes off their constitution. So, 9 damage to Fang the Delectable takes him down to 4. Now, that has no negative consequences for him at the moment, but he's down at 4 hit points, basically. If he takes 4 more damage, he's dead. Now, in group combat, it works slightly differently. You see, because everything's abstracted, both sides make all their dice rolls and add them up. And then the difference is applied split across the group. So, if Fang and his friend are attacking, he manages to get a total of 15. His friend manages to get a total of 17. Then they've done 32. A monster resisting manages to get 20. Then they've done 12 damage to it. However, if they're fighting something larger, like a dragon or something, and it gets well past their 32, it gets, let's say, 52, then each of them take 10 damage. So... In the attack against a dragon, where it managed to get 52, doing 10 points of damage to each by beating their score by 20, and they're splitting the damage between the two characters, it would then matter how much got through to their constitution, by what armour they were wearing. So if we flick on a few pages to armour, we can see you need a certain amount of strength to wear armour, and that's cumulative. So if you're carrying a shield which is 6, and wearing plate mail, which is 11, then you need a strength of 17 to use both of those. And plate mail takes 14 off you, off your damage. A tower shield takes 6, so it takes 20. So if Fang is wearing leather armor, which takes 6 off his damage, he only receives 4. But if his friend is wearing plate mail carrying a tower shield, then they take 20 off, taking their damage down to minus 10. So they take nothing. So they take no constitution damage at all. And advancement. Well, it's a level-based system, so as you earn experience, you go up levels. Now, as you go up a level, as you advance to a higher level, he or she may exercise any one of the options listed below to improve prime attributes. So you get your level worth of points. You can add your new level to strength. So going up to third level, you get three points to add to strength. Add half the new level to IQ. Add twice the new level to luck. Add the new level number to con. Add half the new level to dex. Add half the new level to charisma. And add half the new level to strength and a half to con. So the character can decide as they go up each level what they're boosting by increasing their attributes. Obviously, physical attributes increase faster. So that is a very quick look through the rules of Tunnels and Trolls. They're very simplistic, they're very abstracted, and, but they can be quite a lot of fun. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment below, as it does me massive favours with the YouTube algorithm. But, as always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.